kicking off at our This Morning Mansion today, but we're not the only building in the country experiencing some strange goings-on. A haunted museum in Stoke-on-Trent mm. is claiming to be the proud owner of the UK's most haunted doll, known as Scary Mary. She sounds Scary nice. Scary Mary. Um, as, uh, as well as a host of other possessed artefacts. Owner <laughs> Craig Longson <laughs> joins us now to explain. Good morning. Good oh, morning, look Craig. Oh, that. That's, that's very... Glad that's you're down the line, morning, Craig. Right. Wow. So, um, this right. was your <laughs> grandfather that started you off down this path, wasn't it? It's, yeah, it is indeed, yeah, many years ago when I was about 10 years old, uh, shortly after my grandfather had passed, um, we actually felt his energy around, I could smell his tobacco smoke from his pipe. Um, I was, you know, only a young boy and it's kind of, at that age, hard to what, understand your experience at that point, so I was kind of intrigued from a very early age uh, within the paranormal industry. And also your, your home when you were growing up was uh, haunted, so you were used to seeing spirits and ghosts around. Yeah, it was the house that we lived in was was very very active. It was quite a large house. It had a couple of big landings downstairs, a big old sala. Um, my dad, particularly as well, in the middle of the night, he would randomly see him. If you got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, he would be sitting on the end of his bed. He would proclaim to be talking to his auntie who passed many years ago as well. Uh, so there was a lot of strange circumstances in that house that kind of uh, always had you thinking of what else is around with you at the time. So the blue touch paper by then has already been lit and you get into your 20s and decide to go with a bunch of mates and yes. check out haunted locations. Yeah, there was three of us. We just sort of got together and we were having a chat about things as you do different times of the year and, you know, experiences that we've had. And uh, the three of us just sort of started going around to the UK to different locations and seeing what we could pick up on, experience for ourselves within the, the industry and it kind of escalated from there then. Well, so, thanks. yeah, we went to some fantastic places. Some of them got a bit scared. Some of them stopped. You didn't. You then started your own paranormal events company, which has taken you to many, many strange yes. and wonderful places. Uh, what's the weirdest, scariest yeah. supernatural thing you've ever experienced? I think for me personally, it was um, about, I think it was about 2015, we went to uh, Mill Street Barracks and Ellesmere Port and uh, myself, and there was 20 other guests on this event, and it was for... Uh, an external events company, so I was the guest medium on the night, and um, we saw a lady there that was... The only words I could kind of use is she seemed as if she was possessed by something, uh, and it was witnessed by everybody on that night. She even comes onto our page now. She interacts with members of the public and tells them in her own words what happened as well to herself and her experiences with that, so it was pretty a pretty scary thing to witness in front of yourself. You see these things on movies, TV... But when you're actually there to experience somebody who's been overtaken by something, it's, it's quite scary, yeah. Well, you've set up your company, Ghost. What does Ghost stand for? It's Ghost Hunters of Stoke-on-Trent. So it's, it's run by myself and I have five amazing team members, uh, which is Justine, Gemma, Lucy, Sam and Caroline. And the girls, are they all donate their time for us. The volunteers here at the museum uh, and they're very experienced investigators and they love doing what we do. So, you know, it's, it's, we have got a good experience team behind us. So let's have a look at some of the things, because you're currently in your haunted museum, and this is something you set up in lockdown. We Before are, yes. this, we, yeah. we, all these artefacts were in okay. your home. Are you completely bonkers? But now they're all in here, so show us what you've got, because <laughs> we definitely need to meet Mary. OK. Yes, definitely. Well, this is Mary. This is We class Mary as the most haunted doll in the United Kingdom at the moment. She's an amazing doll. She dates back to around the age of 1951, so she's got a great age to her. We uh, sort of adopted Mary in the middle of last year, so we've had her for just over a year now. Um, and as soon as we had her, she started being quite active in our room. She's been seen many times on CCTV where she's actually, the chair's spanned from side to side. The chair's rocked, her eyes have moved. She's thrown herself out of a chair on two different occasions. She lights up lights that are around her, the equipment sometimes that she likes to play with. We've had four members of the public on a tour here and she was actually on the table in the centre of the room and she was rocking in front of them. Another three ladies who came on, they were having a tour and they actually witnessed their eyes moving all the way over to the right oh, and recentered themselves as well. Um, yeah, so did it's incredible for to have. Did that just out of you? Like, did that just make you go, I want to get uh, rid of her? <laughs> no, not at all. She's, she's amazing. She's a great artefact, one of the best that we've ever come across in all my years of doing this. So um, sometimes it can feel a little bit untowards, uh, but most of the time, yeah, we're quite comfortable with Mary's energy that's around. God. What else have you got? OK, so we'll take you a little look around. There's, there's a lot of artefacts that come through. A couple of the main features that we like to look at is the coffin. 
This was donated to us again last year by a local lady. Um, and originally this came from her pub, which was a haunted pub as well here in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, and it was donated by a local undertaker who had had it in storage for years and years. And this was actually used in the World War to bring uh, fallen soldiers' bodies back into the United Kingdom. There's over a thousand bodies that have been documented to have been in that coffin. Oh, so that can be very, very active. We get a lot of bangs, scratches, knocks around the coffin. Uh, people who stand by it get icy cold at different points. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a piece of history and a great artefact to own for to do with the paranormal research that we do as well. Wow, have you got and a pram? And then over here... Pardon? The pram. Have you got a scary pram? The pram, yes, we have indeed, yes, down here at the front. So this Victorian pram, I've had this in my possession for about 10 years now. On many, many live feeds caught on camera that this pram has been seen to be moved forwards and backwards of its own accord. Um, and we've had this going on for about eight or nine times over the last year. And it, like I say, it doesn't just roll one way, it rolls backwards and forwards, so it moves in both directions. Um, and it's a great piece to have. Um, it's, it's, it's always put in front of the coffin. The room as it's set up here at the corner is originally how this was all produced in my house and where we used to work, so all this was in my home through lockdown. The other artefacts that we would like to show you is what we class as the poltergeist mirror. This comes from our local house in Audley, and uh, two families own this mirror, and it was their aunt who got in touch with us. She was uh, kind of distressed that the, the homeowners were seeing a little girl in the mirror to start with in the bottom left-hand corner. There was a gentleman very recently here at the museum who proclaims to have seen the same girl in the mirror, and also a shadow man in the mirror of a three-year-old boy of the second uh, nephew's home, we had to go and remove the mirror and do a cleansing of the house and take it away because of the activity that it was creating there, things being moved around, doors being slammed, people being touched and things Craig, like that. Yeah, so are, you, uh, yes. are, you, are you actually open to the public? We are indeed, yes. We do daily tours, di guided tours here, where people can come around, see our artefacts for themselves. Uh, what we want to do is give people a real experience of our museum, and these are oh, real artefacts with there. documented history. With she, them. She'll be there like a shot. I suspect you'll be hearing from her today, yes, I would have uh, thought. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs Scarlett won't be there. Yeah, I would have thought. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Thank Thank you, very well. you, can... you. OK. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Brilliant. Bye -bye. Thank you, Angie. All the best. Bye All now. the best. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.